Bonjour, everyone. Welcome to the Bear Hymn. We're back at Epcot. It's time to partake of France. Chef de France. Are Pacific? It's been a minute since we've been to Chef de France. It's, I think this is our fifth review here. Sixth, maybe? It's number of you, but we're always willing to give a place a second chance. This place has always been consistently average. Hoping they blow our minds to that. Be sure to enjoy. Bon yep. appetit. You heard the girl. Pretty much my go-to drink here at the house wine because they're all vegan and there's like four to choose from and it's relatively inexpensive compared to bottles of wine that I get at other restaurants at Disney. Beautiful Pinot Noir, nice light. It's got a really like interesting um, taste of the back end. It's not too acidic and I really like it. I will give it three and a half out of five. Grapes. We're drinking the wines today, the grape juices, the adult grape juices, because when in France, is that what they say? Because they went in Rome. When in Rome. Today we're in France, so screw Rome. Mm. Princess chose well. Usually I'm tempted to let her handle these bottles by herself. Today we might actually fight over this bottle. For a house wine? This is one of the best house ones you're going to find around the World Showcase. I would give it 4 out of 5 plus. The hottest, freshest, most beautiful baguette. It's bigger than the one we got at this year's Paul. And it's very hot. Makes me want to go grab one in the bakery when we're done with this. Ooh, hot. Very, very hot. It's hard, it's hot, it's beautiful, it's tasty. The France always has the best bread. You come here for breakfast and you eat one of these baguettes and you'll be good for like half of World Showcase. Those are four out of five. It gives good bread. Four out of five breads. Right. Turn to the princess's favorite bread. Not her favorite bread, but her first bread. Like her firstborn. But bread, because we don't have children. But. This is the baguette the princess used to get every single time we came to Epcot. This is like her girl dinner, her one Epcot meal for the day. Before we started diving into Disney food, which feels like nine or 10 years ago at this point. What uh, appetit. If I remember correctly, they make all their breads fresh in house here, in the bakery, and they cart them up to the restaurant. It shows. It's unlike most of the breads you're gonna find in the World Showcase, it's like fresh, Made with quality. The one thing it never misses here is the bread. That's a four and a half out of five blocks. So here we have this salmon tartare, which I've never had here, but you got a little salmon tartare, little uh, disc with chips in it, little sauces on the side to dip everything in. And I believe that is a uh, cucumber dill sauce. We're just gonna take a chip. Oh, she got more chips. But this is in America. We're just gonna take a little bit of salmon tartare. We're gonna take a little bit of this dill sauce. And we'll just do it. All in. The potato crisp is a little soggy, the salmon tartare. Super tasty. Fresh, like sushi grade salmon. All chopped up, a little bit of dill in that. And then you have like the dill, cucumber dill sauce. A light smoke to it as well. It feels appetizer worthy. This would be something that normally you share at the table. Obviously, there's no vegan salmon here or vegan salmon Disney period right now, but I would like to see somebody make a vegan salmon tartare. That would be interesting. We could probably do it with carrots, now that I'm thinking about it. Either way, it's tasty. Three and a half out of five plus. Just a hair more civilizing it. Everything in one bite this time. All this green here on the bottom that I missed before. I'm going to load that up on the chip. That is a flavor explosion. At that point, getting everything in. That's enough to raise it to a four. 
Like it's called four out of five flaws. This is a very good app. I like this. Now I want more. I'm glad I don't have to share. A very, very, very different ratatouille from the one that I recall the last time we were here in 2021. Go check out that video. Um, they added a quinoa kale edition. I said edition twice. I'm a little scared for this. But let's just conquer this mountain together. Because we are all about trying new things here. Kale in it? I'm not a kale person. I think my issue with the red too in the past was like, I tasted like much. Now it actually has like, substantial taste and flavor to it. The quinoa is really nice. You're adding like some protein. Quinoa is a superfood. That's awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. I think that coming to Chef Chevron's as a vegan has only evolved into better options, whereas like some restaurants is kind of far worse. Santa Helen. This is, this is good. I like this. I'm going to eat all of this and enjoy it very much, especially with the extra bread that I got. I mean, dip the bread. It's going to be amazing. Also, four out of five bread at two It'd be cool if it looked like the one in the movie. But then you wouldn't have all the other, like, you know, things that you need for this. But the, the vegetables have always been weird for me, the ratatouille here. Not mad at it, it's just different. So, ratatouille. Served Chef de France style, not ratatouille, the rat movie style meal. It'll be okay. Either way, uh, this nice tower of quinoa on that bed. The ratatouille is sort of like... Not like pureed, but sort of like crushed veggies, like all in there. The sauce. It looks pretty on the plate. I'll give you that. It's definitely got like a punch. Like, ratatouille is like a tomato based dish. Usually worried that like the acidity of the tomatoes is gonna hurt the rest of the veggies. This time with like the sort of vegetable puree on top of the sauce. Everything like soaked in that flavor. And it cuts right through the acidity, so it's just a nice, smooth tomato vegetable style flavor. Think of it as like a artistic, thin, chunky tomato soup sort of flavor. And that, that's about what ratatouille tastes like. Um, the quinoa provides some texture, but it doesn't take away from the flavor of the dish. It sort of soaks in more of those flavors, so what you get when you bite in is just like a flavor punch in the mouth. Like somebody slapped you in the face with a roll of cheese. Vegan cheese, but still like a roll of cheese. like. Miyoko's maybe, just slightly on the cheap. I like it. I think it's much improved over what it was before. I would like to see them work in some different plant-based options. So it's like they have the uh, prefix menu here, where the prefix menu isn't vegan, even though there's one vegan option on there. I'd like to see a vegan uh, appetizer and a vegan dessert, something better than just a regular sorbet. But progress is progress. Hmm, 3.75 out of 5 plus. So now I mix up all the quinoa and the kale and the ratatouille all together, and we have like a base version of Whispering Canyon's quinoa cakes. No, we don't. But that was the first place I ever tried quinoa and became addicted. So, cheers to Whispering Canyon. We wanted to down As a person who likes to keep my food separated, I can appreciate the food being mixed together. And most of the time I can't. But in this case I can't. So it's one of those things that if you like to keep your food separated, you can mix this and not feel weird. It seems that me and pork shanks are destined to meet on the field of foodie battle. Uh, the last time that I had a pork shank was at the Grand Floridian Cafe. Uh, pork shank aside, we didn't have the best time there, but you, everybody seems to like the pork shank, so I figure why not give it a try. Now this is slow roasted for five hours, so apparently it just falls off the bone on a bass <clears throat> bed of mashed potatoes, the sauce, and some tomatoes in there, got some covered in green onions. I'm just gonna go in the fork, 
and we're gonna see if their like falls off the bone sort of advertisement is actually true to their work. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> they give you a knife, but you don't need it. I also don't need a piece that big. More like the bone just falls out more than falls off. There we go. Nice, healthy chunk of that pork shank. Green onion still on it. Nice and well cooked. Nice and juicy. Let's shank this pork. Green Mile style. It is nice and flavorful. Like, sort of like taste all the juices from it being slow roasted. It's not dry at all. Literally minimal chewing involved. It's like meat candy, almost. Let's go ahead and try it with the mashed potatoes, the sauce, a little bit of that in there, some of the meats. We're gonna give this an all-in flavor test. Let's take a tomato as well. It's like a pork shank bathed in the juices of French cuisine, basically. The mashed potatoes are the perfectly accompaniment to the savoriness of the pork shank. The sauce pairs well, so it's not overpowering the shank, so we get the taste like those intricacies of the pork. And the green onions are a nice, like, sort of, like, bright addition to that. Uh, I've had fish here most of the times we've come here, and it's time to venture out. And I think that I do not regret getting this, and I would probably order this again. I would give this a solid four out of five claws. Chef to friends, I feel served. Shout out to our awesome server, Jesus. Yes. I hope you guys get him when you come because if you don't request it. Fab. We love, love our team members, cast members, all around the theme parks, especially the ones that show us a really good time, and really good service. That's almost forty percent of the restaurant experience. No, no, Food's one thing, but if you have a bad server, you have a bad time. I don't care how good the food is. True. Uh, Chef de France has improved. We'd like to see it I agree. continue to improve. More plant-based options. I'd like to see a plant-based prefix menu. Otherwise, it's a it's a good romantic date night. You're almost there, Chef de France. You have the, the plant-based entree and dessert. You just need to add an appetizer. If you could modify a salad for me, that would be great, but you can't. But we know what you guys think. Where does Chef de France rank on your list of places you have getting your reservations you come here to visit? Let us know in the comments below. Of course, being your number one choice in foodie infotainment, if there's anything else you can see us do, of course, the comments is always a good place to find us. Hit the notification bell. We'll see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. And if you don't comment, Bear will yeet himself inside a Disney table. And then he'll get stuck because he's a bear. I was actually just thinking of getting lost in that hedge maze over there, but you heard the girl. <laughs>